Hello, this is Terry Luke coming back once again with another video after a long period of time of no action on my channel. As usual, my motivation is periodical, I guess. This time is a bit different because now it's summer in the Northern Hemisphere and I have a lot of free time. Actually, all the time. So this time, what you see in front of you is a spectrum analyzer. It is 6-bit depth and 4 channel because we have uh, 4 LED rows uh, each of them representing different um, resonance frequency and the 6-bit depth because uh, we have 6 LEDs in each row so in total we have 24 LEDs that are controlled individually by this analog system and that's also quite cool thing that all this system is analog uh, I'll begin by giving a backstory of this project. Uh, so, I'm a student of electronics engineering and I had to do a project. Uh, something about analog devices. And at the time I was playing a bit with op amps and I actually really enjoyed the signal processing, if you can call it that, uh, which you can see on the left side of this breadboard. So this was the first time I really got into filters and you might notice an interesting thing about this spectrum analyzer if you roughly understand how it should work and that thing is that we have only a single line voltage supply it means that I don't have negative voltages and I'm working with AC signal and audio signal and operational amps and that really complicates things because I have to raise uh, the signal bias it uh, and not just that I challenged myself to do this project working on 5 volts, or USB voltage. Operational amps, they cut off around 1 volt from high side and low side and has the window of like 3 volts in this situation uh, where it works properly. And that also complicates things because it's hard to uh, keep the signal strong after the, the filters. This is just the first video of my Spectrum Analyzer series or vlog uh, because this is just a prototype. I'm finished with my work with university. I've completed my objectives that I uh, had to do and now I just want to move on because this is quite cool. I want to do better. Uh, so these series will be about me uh, improving this design. So let me quickly go through the things I want to improve with this project. The first problem is that this is on breadboard and building quite complicated circuits on breadboard is, well, annoying. Uh, there's roughly like 200 uh, solderless connections that have to be good on this board and it's not always going that way. So I want to do it on a piece of perv board like this and I might do it a lot tighter than this even though this is quite tight because I'm going to use uh, SMD resistors, capacitors. Other thing I want to improve is better signal to noise ratio and there's two ways to do that. One of them is adding more operational amps and keeping the signal strong after they uh, go after the signal goes through filter. And another thing I'm going to improve is wider voltage range or higher voltage supply. And I'll have to decide if I want to keep my power supply a single line or dual line. The signal processing would be a lot easier. I wouldn't have to worry about biasing voltages. But still, I, I really like the idea of single line because the supply voltage is a lot easier. I only need negative voltages, which is more complicated to get. I want this thing to be easily used. I'm gonna increase the voltage to 12 volts because I'll need 12 volts for other things uh, that I'm planning. I'm going to add an option for uh, picking up the sound not just from some audio source but from a microphone like piezo uh, transducer. I'm going to add a custom output driver. I want to power high power LEDs and I'll have to do the driver for it. Let me just show you what I have in mind. So this is my plan, roughly. So I'll have some piezo transducer or some signal which is selectable 
going to the gain control just to amplify the signal because signal is like in hundreds of, of millivolts or even tens of millivolts in amplitude only. Uh, so also if I'm ch choosing the single line supply, uh, I'll have to add some kind of virtual ground system. One of them is a low pass filter, two band pass filters and a high pass filter. The band pass filter also has an additional amplifier before it. Then they, they go to peak detectors and each of those channels go to this part. So there's four parts of this. So the signal goes to the 6 LED VU meter that you've seen. I'm going to keep it and it's going to po power the LEDs which will be used just for indication, for control. The comparator will, will power those LEDs and also the signal will go to an individual um, AND gate. Each of the LEDs or each of the bits will go to an individual AND gates. And the other input of these AND gates will be controlled by PWM module. Pulse width modulation would mean uh, how dim the output would be. And this thing will be controlled by voltage. And that voltage can be selected. Uh, one of the ways to control it is just uh, having a fixed intensity while well, controlled by a potentiometer. Also, I can make it uh, actively controlled by, let's say, other channel. And this part could be selectable, customizable. So not only I would have the control of how many LEDs lights up on the channel, which depends on the average um, resonance frequency amplitude, but also I could control the dimness of them. In my opinion, this would make a real co really cool effect. Oh, I didn't say anything about the AND gate outputs. They all go to a uh, high power LED driver. I'll guess this will be uh, an array of MOSFETs. So that's why I'm using PWM. This is the only thing I don't really know how, it, how I'll make it. I've seen that you can well, make PWM with uh, five, five, 5 timers. So I'll try that. And uh, yeah, these will change the intensity of the high power LEDs and I'll have uh, connections and they can be hooked to LEDs, LED strips or anything that is uh, any light that is powered by 12 volts. So this is my idea and the filters I'm going to use will be different. And now I used simple filters, well bandpass filters made out of a low pass and a high pass filter, which is just a combination of a resistor and capacitor. Now I'm going to use a bit more complicated uh, filters like this. This is the bandpass filter and I think they call the saline key filters. These have higher quality coefficient and so that means a much narrow, narrower band. So these bandpass filters would have a much better separation so they wouldn't overlay each other. The same goes with the low pass and the high pass filter. I'm going to use a second stage uh, filters there. So I'll see how it goes. Uh, just there's a lot of things to talk about, but um, I'll just begin and, and um, I'll keep you updated with my progress. I think this spectrum analyzer could be quite cool. Uh, so I'll keep this channel updated with my progress on this project and uh, be sure to subscribe for that and thank you for watching see you next week um i hope yeah